Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to Rimble 86. Today we're going to talk about thermals. I'm going to show you a quick way to tell if you have a fan that's going bad or possibly is bad. It's, it's hard to say. Um, but yeah, without further ado, let's get started and take a look at a few things. So I recently was looking over my computer and I noticed my thermals here, which I just rebooted, so that's to be expected. But I noticed my core temperatures were hovering right around 50 degrees. And my minimums were right around 40 degrees. So if you don't have this tool and you have an older computer like I do, my computer was built, well, in the case that it's in, it was built roughly six, seven years ago, maybe, give or take. And the components that are in it are probably 10 years or more. So it is what it is. It runs everything I need it to at the moment. So. Uh, I do need to upgrade it so I can really get a good feel for uh, Cyberpunk 2077 right here. I want to play that like it's meant to be played. But in the meantime, I mean, it plays most every everything else. So we'll see what's going on from there. So anyway, uh, back to the thermals here. So looking at the thermals, you'll notice that my maxes are right around 50 degrees. Now, my target is 45 degrees Celsius or less, and I'll show you that real quick on ASRock Extreme Tuner. Little flashy screen there for you. All right, so on my ASRock here, I'm going to click over on fan control. So on my CPU, its target is 45 degrees Celsius, 113 Fahrenheit. And its target fan speed is whatever I can muster to throw at it, which is good. It's fine. So what I was seeing here, though, is I was seeing my current temperatures were staying in the mid-50s. And my maximum temperatures over here were hitting over 60. So th that's definitely a problem. I mean, it shouldn't be hitting that high unless it's under a load. Not just sitting here idle, clicking through things. That should never be that high. So, oh, uh, going on to mention, if you've never used that tool over there, that is Hardware Info, or HW Info 64 for my machine. Um, it is a free tool that is excellent. It'll tell you a readout of what's in your machine. It'll also allow you to connect to the sensors and see what's going on in your system real time, which is really helpful if you're doing overclocking, tuning, anything like that. So I highly recommend it. I've been using it for years and it's just fantastic. I, I don't have any complaints. So uh, anyway, uh, this isn't a plug to sell their software. They're just their software is amazing. So I recommend it. Just Google search HW info. Um, there's a website you can download it for free. It's amazing. Try it out. Anyway, um, but yeah, so back to what I was saying here. So I was getting 50s, you know, low to mid 50s here on the current, and I was getting 60s for my max temps, which is bad. In short, it's it's only about halfway on my TJ Max, which is the maximum the processor can handle before it starts melting things in internally. That's typically what the TJ Max refers to. So I was only about halfway, but my CPU was throttling. I was only seeing about 77 watts worth of actual performance out of my 95 watt processor. So I was playing around with benchmarks and noticing, I mean, thoroughly noticeable performance issues. So I was like, well, let's take a look at the hardware because I haven't done that in a while. Um, actually, this is probably the first time in a year or year and a half that I've actually sat down with this machine and actually done anything more than copy files or things like that. I've just been busy with work. So excuses, excuses anyway. So I was like, huh, I wonder why that is. So I popped the side off my case while it's on and noticed that the CPU fan is running extremely slow. I'm like, huh, I wonder why that is. So Immediately, I go ahead and shut down my machine and take a look at it, trying to figure out what's going on with that processor because it, 
I mean, with that fan, because it shouldn't be that slow, but for some reason it is. So I'm like, huh, maybe it exploded inside. So long story short, I went and found another fan, plugged it in, and my CPU or my RPMs are pretty good. Uh, do I think my board does fan RPMs? It does the, yeah, it does the CPU fan. So right here. So this was at between two and 400 RPM, which for a silent fan, that's okay. I mean, that's kind of what you'd expect, but it seemed kind of low being that it was so warm. So I was like, huh. Well, shut it down, took out the fan, and this is a fan. I have a Evo or a Hyper 212 Evo, which has comes with this Cooler Master pre-installed fan. Uh, the blade design, I don't know if you can see it real well, but it's kind of curved. Hold on, let me pull you up here a little closer. So if you look at the fan blade here, it's kind of like curved on the outside right here. And what that's supposed to do is it's supposed to help with acoustics. So this fan's supposed to run extremely, extremely quiet at low RPMs and still move quite a bit of air. So what uh, what I found out is she don't want to move. So I'm trying to move it here and it's it's hard to the touch. Like you really got to work on it. I don't know if you can see it real well on the camera. Let me see if I can get in the lighting a little better here. Maybe. But uh, maybe you can see that bubble right there. So when I pulled this fan out, and you can see it bubbled up a little bit here too, maybe. Maybe. No. Anyway. Uh, so this has a sleeve bearing or may have a hydro bearing in it. I'm not really sure. Um, I would assume it has some kind of bearing in it, but um, if I had to guess the way that it's acting, I would say it's probably a sleeve bearing with silicone grease in there. So the first thing that I always do with a fan that's getting sticky like this and doesn't want to move. Oh, let me, I guess before I go any further, let me show you a comparison of a sticky fan like this that doesn't want to move. See that? to a little 80 mil, I guess this is an 80 mil Delta fan out of a server, but see that? See how it just wants to keep going? Now this is a Delta, so the, the motor in it's pretty strong, so you'll see it kind of jerk around there as it comes to a stop. But the point is, is I can easily just flick it and it'll spin. There's no, you know, there's no grinding, no vibration. I can feel it. This one does have a hydro bearing in it, and you can feel it when you spin it up. Because it'll do like a... And just a tiny, tiny bit of vibration. Now, on this one, on the other hand, I'm pretty sure this one has a sleeve bearing. Get that out of the way. So... Anyway... <laughs> So when I'm doing the same thing to this fan, she no want to spin. She, it, it's like, no. And when I do get it, work it around enough to get it to where it'll loosen up just a little bit here. When I do spin it, it's really, really vibrating. I mean, like at the slowest speeds, it feels like that fan spun up as fast as I can spin it. And that's just barely moving this. So. That's a quick way to tell if your fan's bad. Now, one thing that you can do and try to recover a fan and get a little more life out of it, if you're like me and always on a budget, is on the back of it, there's typically a sticker that you can take off of here. And uh, you can peel that sticker back about halfway, and there's usually a little rubber cap over the bearing. So you can pull that little rubber cap off, and you can add a little bit of... Uh, I use silicone oil, um, super lube. It seems to work really well. And you put a, maybe a drip or two in there and then close it all back up, put your sticker back on. 
If your sticker doesn't want to stay, you can put a piece of tape over it to help hold it. And then uh, you just work it around and work that oil in there, you know, kind of put it on its face, on its back. You can slide the bearing in and out a little bit, get that oil in there, and it'll free it up. Unfortunately, on this one here, if you can see it there, maybe, it is not serviceable. There's no opening there that you can open and put oil in it. So, in short, once this fan, the grease wears out and this fan has worked its way to the outside, which it inevitably will, then this bearing shot. There's nothing you can do to save this fan, even though it's still, it's still functional. There's nothing you can do to save the bearing. So the fan will never work again. Now, I'm not saying that's a flaw with this particular fan. Well, I guess I am saying it's a flaw with this particular fan. But anyway, that's not to say it's a flaw with the brand. Because this may be a fan that Cooler Master bought from somebody else. This could be just the way that it was designed. So that it has a specific amount of grease that's supposed to last a specific lifespan. I really don't know. I don't know the story behind it. I know Cooler Master is a fantastic brand. I've used them for years. They're they're wonderful. So anyway, back on topic here. I had a bad fan. <laughs> so what are you gonna do? Of course you're gonna pull this pull this little guy out, put a new one in, in my case a new used one, and put it back together and get back to work. So Anyway, that's a quick way to tell if your if your fan's bad, is you can go in there while this is still mounted to your CPU, and just try spinning it. Don't I mean you don't have to go crazy on it. You don't have to get a screwdriver or a drill or something and do a rubber fit and try to spin it up as fast as it. No, you don't have to do any of that. Just put your finger on the blade, gently push the blade. If it spins easy, then you're more than likely your bearing's still okay. Now that doesn't say that the internals on the back of here that control that fan motor are good, but out of all the fans that I've worked on, I would say probably 9 out of 10 of them is this bearing. Most of these have little cheap sleeve bearings that have silicone grease or something similar in there. And what it does is as this fan is speeding spinning away all that grease is working to the outside of the sleeve and eventually works its way to the outside of the bearing and is no longer making contact with the bearing and no grease no lube the bearing walls its way out and starts to vibrate and once it's done that i mean there's not much you can do i mean you can lube it up and it'll help for a little while but you're still going to have a bunch of vibration and eventually the fan's just going to fail again because it's wallowed out that sleeve bearing. And to put it into perspective, what a sleeve bearing is, is it's kind of like a little needle and then it has a little metal sleeve that it sits on. And there's normally, a, on the end of this, there's a little, I guess, a retaining clip on the end of it that keeps it from sliding in and out of that little socket that it sits in. And that's all there is to it. I mean, there's there's no actual like ball bearings. There's nothing like that. It, it's a little pin riding inside of a sleeve with a retainer clip. And so once that grease works its way out of that sleeve, it starts wobbling around like so and wallows it out in there. And then it no longer moves smooth because there's too much gap in there and it vibrates around. That's, we'll go with that's the technical way to say that. Anyway, so anyway, getting back to it, my uh, Evo here from, I believe, yeah, it's eight stamped here. So my, can you, maybe, I don't know. Anyway, so my Evo, uh, my Hyper 212 Evo. From 2014, the fan finally died on it in 2021. So, 
give or take that six years, that's pretty good bet. That, in my opinion, that's pretty good life on a fan. Considering my computer is an always up computer, I almost never shut it off unless I have to. So, and there's an, I'll make another video about that, but there's reasons behind me leaving it up all the time outside of, I like to waste power, I guess, because that's not really the answer or the truth. So what, what are you going to do <laughs> anyway? Um, uh, anyway, that's a quick how to on how to take a look at your fan, see if it's bad. As I said, if you spin it and it does spin, but it vibrates really bad, that's a sign that the bearings worn out. If it doesn't spin like this one, that's a sign that the grease is worn out of the bearing and that it needs to be relubed. And in this case, I can't relube this fan, so this one's done. Um, I mean, you could probably take the motor out if you wanted to and put it in a new fan and all that. But at that point, you're putting more man hours into it than it costs to just buy a fan. So to each their own. but. If you're on a really tight budget, you might be able to do that. You know, take it apart, regrease the bearing, get it working, that kind of thing. But for me, this one's done. I'm going to file 13 it like so. Anyway, so that gives you a quick rundown on it. So if your, if your temperatures start getting out of control, and you're not doing anything to make them out of control, there's a problem. And you probably want to take a look at your fans, make sure nothing got unplugged. That's normally where I start is I just look at the cords, make sure everything's plugged in, the cord's not ripped off, and that the fan spins. So if the fan, you know, it's plugged in, cord's running up, the fan's trying to move, then that tells you you're getting power to it and the motor's working. The next thing to look at is that bearing because it may need to be relooped. Pull that little cover off the back. Put you a couple of drips of whatever your favorite kind of lubricant is. Uh, I got a buddy that uses three in one. I personally use Super Lube. Um, you can pick it up Ace Hardware, wherever. Um, but any kind of lubricant that you can put down in there. I, I use Super Lube for the simple fact that it's a silicone grease, meaning that if it does work its way out, onto the contacts or anywhere in there that you're not going to hurt anything because it's non-conductive. You're good to go. You can probably use mineral oil and it'd be fine. So um, if you prefer, you can, on some of them, they have a metal retainer clip. Some of them you have plastic. If it has a metal one, you can take, pull your fan out, put actual grease down in there if you want, put it back in, clip it back in. If it has a plastic retainer clip, I do not recommend taking that retainer clip off because you will more than likely break it. Every one that I've tried to do that on, I've broken that retainer clip and that was it for the fan. Because I can't ever find those clips anywhere. And if I do find them, they want four or five bucks for the clip plus shipping. And at that point, it's cheaper just to buy a new fan and keep going. So what are you going to do? Um, anyway, that was the quick how-to on thermals. If, if you run into something like that, see something like that, that's where I would start is check cables, make sure everything's plugged in, everything's getting power, fans are spinning. And then I would start to suspect, you know, is it spinning where it's supposed to be? Because most fans, most typical fans are anywhere between 5 and 2,500 RPM as a typical case fan. Now, I have Delta fans for servers that run at 5,000 to 12,000 RPM, but that's a whole different ball of wax. Uh, funny story. This is actually a Delta out of a server, and this one runs at 5,000 RPM. So that's why I was saying it's it's a little different. The bearing on it, it has a hydro bearing on it. So it feels a little weird when you're spinning this compared to a sleeve bearing, because a sleeve bearing, when you spin it, you don't feel anything. This one, when you spin it, you can feel that bearing move around in there. So I think this one actually has a ball bearing in it, if I remember right. You know what? Let's just do this. Let's go to 3D Mark. Let's just run a benchmark, see what happens. I mean, that'll, that'll kind of tell us what's going on, won't it? So let's see what happens.
Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. Go for a walk. What's with the weird worm thing? Oh, his friend's coming to play. How did you not notice him walking up the stairs? Oh, wait, she did. Oh, that's cute. Yep. Lots of physics. Sparks. I seem to remember this running much better. Oh no, the violence ensues. The real question is, why is she transparent? Oh, neat. I don't think I've actually seen this one. Oh, the violence ensues. I want that sword. This sword's baller. So, thinking about it, I am streaming on the same computer I'm running this test. So that may have just a a lot to do with it. Who knows? Graphics look pretty decent, though. That's an old Kepler card, 600 series. I think they're on, they're on what, the 13 series, 11, I don't know, they're on the 3000 RTX series, so, yeah, the 900, the 10K, the RTX 2K, and RTX 4K, 3K, sorry, 3K. That's four, five generations out. Seven, nine, ten, two K, three K. Five generations of card of architecture, five generations old. And it still looks as good. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> I know part of the problem is it's only got 2 gigs of RAM, so it can only handle so much. It does not like 1080p very much. It'll do 720 like a champ, but... It gets a little flaky in 1080, because there isn't enough video RAM. So it ran through that CPU test like a champ. Sometime today, my friends, sometime today. Oh, here we go. Giants in the background. Statues? I don't know. They're kind of jerky, though. And results are loading. Yep, absolutely pathetic. That's kind of what I expected. Looking over here, for some reason I still only hit 75 watts on my package. 
CPU power. That should have hit 95 watts. I think that's because I actually have it throttled in my overclocking utility. Save life on processor kind of thing. I'll have to look at that because it may be locked. And if that's the case, that could be why it's not loading up the whole package. <laughs> that's right, the whole package. Anyway, the more important thing is these are the kind of numbers that I was seeing before I replaced my fan on the current. All the time. So, and I was seeing in the 60s and, oh, or, you know, mid-60s. That's something new. So, anyway. As you can see here, my core temperatures are dropping. Which is to be expected. It's cooling down the internals in the case and the graphics card. Because, actually, did my graphics card get hot? Let's find out. Graphics card. Oh, graphics card. 80 degrees Celsius. So that thing was pumping out 80 degrees Celsius air all over the inside of my case and out the back of the case. So, a little warm in there. Now, my case is well ventilated. I got two intake fans on the front, one on the bottom, and then... 140 mil exhaust and 120 mil exhaust on the back. So it goes in from the front, up through the components, and out through the top and back. Which is it's pretty good. I mean, there are vent holes for other fans and stuff like that. I could add tons upon tons of fans to this case that I have. It's a Rosewell Blackhawk. Blue Hawk? Rosewell Blue Hawk. I love it, mainly because it's got its own docking station on top. I can drop hard drives in there and copy stuff and whatever. And me being a tech guy, I do that all the time. Like I'll grab the hard drive out of my gaming rig up there on the TV, drop it in this machine, pull some saves or games or whatever off of there, put new games on it or whatever. Now, that goes for the games that are not downloaded through Steam. And for those who don't know that those games still exist, they do still exist. But anyway, back on topic. The, as you can see up here on the, where to go? There it is. My processor temps are still cooling down. My, they're well, well below my maximums. So everything seems to be working now with the new fan. All right, well, thanks for watching. We're going to uh, call this one quits here. You got some pointers, tips, tricks on how to work on fans, how to tell if a fan's bad, what to expect in thermals, and even some software to check out if you have thermal problems. Just a reminder, if you don't have hardware info, you're planning to do overclocking, unless you have some kind of vendor software from your motherboard, that has all the tools that you need in it, I highly recommend Hardware Info. And for those of you who are on laptops that don't have overclocking tools and you want to look at the thermals, guess what? It works. So check it out. Um, help support the guys over there at Hardware Info if you really like their software. It always helps them keep moving things forward. But anyway, we're going to call this one quits here. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, subscribe. It's too late to talk. Goodbye.